Gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. I've always been a fan of science fiction. Not all science fiction, but some of it. The reason I like science fiction is primarily that it can be good fun. That said, the script writers of many shows have been able to use the otherworldliness of their creation to create interesting what-if scenarios. Using that, they can explore some of our own social taboos or the issues that vex us and sometimes, through their characters, pick at our collective flaws. Well, when I sat down this morning to work out what I might say in this reflection, all that kept coming into my mind was an episode of Star Trek Voyager. For in it, there is a character, uh, for fans I'm referring to, Belana Torres. This character is half human, half alien. The human half is meek, intelligent and thoughtful. The alien half, however, is wild, argumentative, aggressive and rough. The character's development throughout the show regularly focuses on the challenge of the character suppressing and channeling her wilder tendencies so that she could successfully live in an ordered society. Very much the human half of her overcoming the alien, the culture overcoming the beast. Regrettably, Balana visits a planet where the police can read your thoughts, literally, and you can be arrested just for thinking about committing a criminal act, a bit like George Orwell's 1984 think poll and their telly screens. Unfortunately for Balana, but predictably for the plot, there is an incident in the show where Balana momentarily thinks about walloping someone who runs into her in the market, and, bish bash bosh, she is nicked and imprisoned. Cue outrage, failed negotiations, covert rescue and diplomatic shenanigans end credits. However, the plot developed around the outrage of the rest of the crew. The outrage that Balana was being imprisoned merely for a thought, irrespective of the fact that she did not actually act upon it. And the link to today's, today's scripture reading, when you think about it, is fairly obvious. For in it, Jesus claims that when you commit, that you commit adultery merely by looking at somebody else lustfully, whatever that might mean. Well, that's really quite an outrageous claim, isn't it? Since Plato, we have considered the control of our baser animal instincts as the mark of civilization, that reason and emotion are opposing forces that our experience and wisdom help us to control. That whatever you might think, however subconsciously, it is our behavior that matters. In other words, what we do outside our bodies matters more to a civilized community than what goes on inside our heads. That's obvious, isn't it? Now, I admit that I have found much of the past two weeks' events both shocking and perplexing. The reports of how some people have been behaving and how many are reacting seems odd, and I have not quite figured out what it is really, what's really going on in some cases. But one thing is obvious. What we think inside our head does indeed matter, especially if we might be unaware of how what happens in our heads might be reflected outwardly in our behaviour especially if that might even happen without our knowledge and in our subconscious. Now, Jesus' remedy is perhaps a little extreme, and I don't think he meant it literally. I don't think he was suggesting that we literally rip out our eyes and sever our limbs because we found the person who's moved into number three a bit of all right. The real prohibition in what he is saying is that we must not be thinking of or treating people as objects. In this case, it is an object of desire, but it might just as easily be to look upon someone else as a scapegoat, as a means to an end, or as a beast of burden. 
The prohibition is against denying other people the opportunity to fully grow into the creature that God created them to be. And whilst I'm glad that I don't live in the world that Bellonatoras found with an Orwellian thought police and the need to fear my own thoughts, I am at this time perhaps more mindful of them. And I suggest this isn't a bad thing for any of us, to think carefully and prayerfully about what and how we think, and to be aware of how that might be influencing how we behave, even if we're unaware of it. <laughs>